Up here is a game changer for off-griders and emergency preparedness. And it can give you reliable internet access even in remote areas or places of natural disaster. I'm talking, of course, about Starlink internet, and I'm gonna share with you how to set it up, how easy it is, and why it's so useful for especially what we saw with Hurricane Helene, where communication can be critical. Starlink is high-speed satellite internet provided by this guy. I'm sure you know him. And it's high-speed, reliable internet, which is great for places like here where we traditionally don't have any internet access or where it's pretty remote. We used it for three years while living fully off the grid, and it worked beautifully for us even while working full-time from home. Unlike conventional internet that uses cell towers or cables, Starlink uses a network of satellites in low Earth orbit to get you connectivity. The nice thing about this is it's great for off-gridders who aren't connected to any existing grid, and it's also super helpful during natural disasters when the grid really goes down. Now let's take a look at what comes with your Starlink and how to set it up. You'll receive the dish, which is your Starlink antenna, the router, which is basically your Wi-Fi, the cables to connect them, and we're also gonna download the Starlink app for setup. And not to worry if your dish or your Starlink looks a little bit different from mine. It may depend on the model they're producing at the time or the year, but they all act the same. There's a dish and a router, and they all connect to the internet and work well. First, we're gonna find a clear spot where we think we're gonna mount the dish, maybe on top of our house or out in our front lawn, and we're gonna use the app and we're going to check for obstructions in the area we think we're gonna go. So I'm gonna click I'm ready, and I'm gonna look up, and it's gonna start gathering data from my smartphone to decide if this is a decent spot where I'm gonna have little to no obstructions. Okay, so it's showing me that this is actually not an ideal space because I have a bunch of trees there on the right of the dish. This is really helpful for you. So the better the clearing you have, the better it's gonna be. Next, I'm gonna connect the dish and the router using this cable here. I'm just gonna plug in to the bottom of the Starlink and the bottom of the router, and I'm gonna power it up. Now that it's powered up, you're gonna use the Starlink app and it's gonna walk you easily through the process of just naming your Wi-Fi and getting you up and running. And within a few minutes, you'll have internet access. And you probably noticed that I'm running this setup from a battery bank to show you, which is really one of the pluses about Starlink, which is it's totally off-grid capable. It uses such little power to operate even in the winter time. I typically find that the Starlink uses about 30 watts of AC electricity, which is very low. So when we lived in our van for five years off-grid, it was no problem to keep the Starlink on almost all day and use the internet all the time. I'll share with you some speed tests in a minute, but here's some tips to maximize your Starlink's performance. Always make sure you have a clear line of sight for your dish from buildings or trees. This way they won't impede the signal and ruin your service. Starlink has a built-in heater in the dish that melts the snow, so make sure not to make any coverings to keep snow off of it. Also, you can keep a battery bank around. That way you can make sure you always have internet even if your grid power goes down. By the way, if you're finding this guide helpful so far and want to learn more about off-grid living, solar setups, battery backups, make sure you subscribe because I'm actually building a battery backup for a tiny home right now. We put the tiny home on the grid after five years of living off-grid and we find we go out of power a lot where we live. So I'm gonna build a backup for there. That's happening right now. I'm always posting tutorials and helpful tips for the better ways of living in remote areas and always being prepared. So make sure you subscribe for that. And I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like that helps me create more content for those that wanna follow and learn some more. So let's get back to the video. Okay, now that we have that all set up, let's take a look at the app and some speed tests you might typically get. I brought you in our tiny home here just so I'm a little bit closer to the router so we can get an accurate amount of speed. So here on the main screen, I'm gonna to go to speed test and it's gonna run a test of upload and download speed. So right now we're hitting around 180 megabit per second, which is our download speed, which is really good average. Next it's gonna try upload, which is showing around 22-ish megabit per second upload, which is also typically what we see with the 37 megasecond millisecond latency, which is also typical for us. If we go back on the main screen, we're gonna go obstructions. And this is that point of view that the dish is seeing. So all of the blue there means that it has an uh, clear unimpeded view of the sky in order to connect to satellites. 
The red is where it's going to be obstructed by buildings or trees. In our case, we have uh, a tree just over the edge of the tiny home there, which it's obstructing just a little bit. It's not a big deal. It's not going to be noticeable, but the more blue you have, the better connection and the better stability you're going to have. You also may not be able to see this right away when you set up your Starlink. It needs about 12 hours before it has an accurate map to show you here. Now you might be wondering why Starlink is so important, not only for off-grid living, but emergencies as well. First of all, it's accessible in places where other internet options are limited or unavailable. And for anyone living off the grid, especially in remote areas, having reliable internet can help you stay connected to critical resources. During disasters like Hurricane Helene, when cell towers were down and the power grids failed, having a direct line to the internet could be a literal lifesaver for staying updated and communicating with the outside world. It has helped us tremendously with living the lifestyle we want to do, and I couldn't recommend it more. And that's how you set up your Starlink internet. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below and I'm more than happy to answer them. Sadie's enjoying her butt rub right now. Also make sure you subscribe and give this video a like. I'd really appreciate it because it helps me get the videos out there and maybe it'll help someone. So make sure you do that as well. And until next video, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.